All right, everything's looking fantastic. Let's do this, guys. I don't like that light back there. We're gonna change this up real quick. It's real fast. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> All right, guys. Welcome to Friday Night Freestyle. It's gonna be fantastic tonight. Have a really cool little canvas for you guys to learn to paint on, right? Now, this one is a 15 by 30 inch canvas, and it's gonna be really, really cool looking by the time we get done. We're gonna do this awesome little sunset. But the first things first, we have to make sure that our canvas is nice and wet in order for all of our colors to spread across and slide all over and blend easily, right? We're not only streaming to Facebook, but TikTok and YouTube as well. So you'll be able to go over and rewatch this video multiple times over and learn how to paint this painting, right? Now, as you can see, I've taken my Bob Ross Liquid Clear. I've got a couple more jars coming in the mail. But Bob Ross Liquid Clear looks just like this, right? I used half of this jar to do that entire big mural that we just did, right? So you don't need a whole lot. And no matter if you've done it a million times or if you're paint with Josh, if you're just starting out, you're going to put on too much. So let's come back in and wipe off all that excess clear before we do anything in our sky. And that way we don't transfer any white down into our black area, right? We painted this with black acrylic gesso so it would be black instead of white, right? That stuff looks just like this. So Liquitex black gesso. This is what we use in order to make the whole shape. And I'm gonna blow your guys' minds. Oh no, I took it downstairs, but it's okay, I've got another one. I'm gonna blow your guys' minds. All you guys that are watching right now, you're gonna be privy to something, right? In order to spread this gesso so cleanly and you literally do it in 10 seconds, get one of these little pro edge, like edging tools you put the thing on there and just, you can do the whole canvas if you needed to in a second, guys. I'm telling you, get one of these. You're going to love me for it. I'm telling you. And I love Tanisha for telling me about that thing. So, you guys let me know where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And I've got to come get a few little colors from the old paint box onto the palette so we can get started, right? Now, a little of my black, a little crimson, a little blue. Then we're going to have our two brown colors. Going to have some all sorts of craziness. Got all the three yellow colors out. We've got lots of stuff. Let's even leave, I don't know, maybe we get some purple out later on. Maybe we get it out right now. Let's get the purple out right now. And this is the I should have bought more of this purple. I didn't realize I didn't have any left when I was at Michael's earlier today. But... Now the chit chat is over, you guys are telling me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? I forgot to put this guy away. Whoops! There we go. Now we can finally get some paint onto the canvas, right? Let's grab our liquid white, which looks just like this guy. Big old, much bigger jar of liquid white because you use it a lot more on your white canvases. We're going to shake it up just a little bit. Grab our two inch brush, right? Come into here. Dab it down in there, and then just crisscross across all of our white color and our white area. We get all this liquid white everywhere, right? We don't want to get it into our black area. Watch this. The more that you scrape it into your black, it makes it look like it's a lot further away. But also, we're trying to keep this area nice and dark so our there's, shadows there's stand out, right? So we don't want to make it too bright with too much of this liquid white. Finish the edges because it's just a little bit of edge on this guy. Right up here, over there. Here we go. We're all set and ready. As long as our canvas is nice and wet, it's got a little bit of liquid white on it, we'll be set and ready to go. So, let's see. It's Friday night. It's been a minute since we've done a beautiful little seascape, and this one is going to look eerily similar to my big mural. Right? The big mural we've been doing, that's what the, the inspo is for this painting. So if you like what that turned out to be, then you're gonna love how this guy's gonna be, right? Let's dab off our brush. Make sure we don't have too much of our paint up there, get all those bristles off. And now let's go into some colors, right? I'm gonna switch to a one inch brush because there's not a lot of sky in this painting, right? We don't wanna overfill it too much. So let's start real bright with our cad yellow, all right? Grab the cad yellow, bring that guy down here. Boom, 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 just like that, little bit of it. And I'm going to take one of the old Paint With Josh tricks 
Let's put our sun like right down on the horizon with a little cup right there, right? I'm gonna stay in my white area and just go around the cup. Boop! I'm not gonna go into my darkness. We don't need that. We gotta keep it nice and bright, right? Let's take this guy and blend it outwards. Out, 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 out. Bang, all of a sudden you got a sun. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna take it and blend it in just a little bit from the edges, right? Let it stay real bright white. Kind of looks like a little chia pet or something. It doesn't really have to look perfect because we're not done blending it out, but we don't want to lose that pure bright center, okay? That's the goal of the whole thing. Let's go into our next little color. Maybe a little yellow ochre, maybe some Indian yellow on the brush as well. And we'll just toss some of that maybe out onto the sides. Get a little bit of that out there. Go into our mead and crimson because it's so gorgeous. Throw some of that in over here. Maybe, you know what? Yeah, let's go a little mead and crimson around this guy too. Just a little touch. You gotta have a buffer of crimson in between your yellow and then your blues. Now watch this. We'll go into our cerulean blue from the Meaden set, which is just a gorgeous blue. It's so pretty and it blends into like the most prettiest purple too. And then we'll come into our thalo blue over here, mixing all the sets together. Now this thalo blue from the, uh, the Windsor set is a bit darker than the thalo blue from the Bob Ross set. Let's get a little of our purple too. A little purple. Toss some purplage in there. A little purple back over here as it gets far away from our colors. That's gonna be a pretty cool looking scene, if you ask me, guys. Pretty cool looking. Let me get up underneath my easel up there. Boom, 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 boom. And now let's go back to blend all these colors together, right? But we can't do that with a color, uh, with a brush so full of color. So let's take that brush, wash it off, and you guys are gonna share this video to the first three people that you know. Just whoever you know, your favorite three people. Send it over to them. Check it out and say, hey dude, this guy's painting some really cool stuff over here. It looks like a four-year-old's done it right now, but if you just give him a second, it'll look really neat by the time we get done, right? Really cool. Now, let me switch over here, grab up one of these guys and come into our, our lightest area first, like we always do with the big old two-inch brush, except this time we're using the one-inch brush. We crisscross back and forth. Back and forth, blending it, blending it, blending it, blending it, boom, right? All of a sudden, it's become colorful, right? There's no more white there, but it's going to be brighter than everywhere else in our sky as long as we don't drag these colors in too much. And so we crisscross back and forth, just kind of taking them down, making them kind of ombre. You never know where one starts and one stops. and get that real soft little feel to it. Now, if you put on too much paint into your sky and you're like, oh, I can't get rid of this hard line, don't worry about it. We can go put a cloud over it. Right? It's no big deal. No biggie. Remember, don't drag all of our color in around that little spot. We're going to want it. I'm telling you, we're going to want it bright. Come back over here. So then now as we're out into our deeper, darker colors and we crisscross, we're not going to want to go down into that light area anymore. That light area is now off limits. Don't come past our crimson. Oof, don't do that. Don't do it. Especially out here into our purpley bit. It's going to get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. Now, we don't need to cover up too much of our mountainous area because they will try to disappear on you if you cover up too much of them. Look at those colors, guys. I love that Meaden set. It's so awesome. You can get the most awesome little colors out of it, too. Drag a little of our darkness down in here. Maybe we'll have some far-off clouds or some sort of something. And you can tell there's some areas where there's still, it's kind of real hard, right? We haven't... We can't blend those areas out because our brush is continually grabbing color. Right? It's constantly getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. So let's go back and wash it off again. And get all the paint off of that guy, right? Sometimes when we're doing a sunset, you might have to uh, wash your brush and go back and do it three, four times. You never know. It's all in how you want it to look, right? So, put that guy down over there. Grab this guy up. Let's go back into the same spot in the middle first right and we get very light pressure because we don't want to drag that color into our dark or into our lighter area right very softly we can start to decide once that light area is gone it's gone forever so don't let it disappear on you completely very cool right now out into our darkness don't let these colors grow too too far right like i said the more that you mix at it the more it's all going to go to one color and sort of be like an ombre effect where you won't be able to tell where one starts and one stops. And if you can't, you just can't get them to look like they're 
blending together, then just stop, right? Don't overdo it. Don't make it any worse. Just stop. We can always go back in, put a little cloud in there, this, that, and the other. Very cool. Bringing our colors down softly. All these little lines where they're starting to crisscross together, those become where we can throw some giant clouds and different things in there, guys. It ends up looking really, really, really neat. Look at that color. All right, let's wash this brush off one final time. And then we'll hit that sucker with the big old two inch. And now that everything's all spread apart, we shouldn't have an issue about it dragging all over the place, right? Let's even get out the paint with Josh two inch brush. Man, that feels good to say. Have you ever had your own name on a brush set? Have you? The paint with Josh brushes. Oh, they're just excellent. Fabulous. Oh, and these are just generation ones, right? The gen twos are coming where I've made my, uh, my adjustments, see how they're a little thin? Very thin, which I kind of like to get into small areas, but I've, ad I've adjusted them so they'll be about twice as thick as they are right now, and uh, they should work excellently, right? We'll come in here into that light area, not gonna overdo it. Look at how soft these bristles are. And they just fly, just float right over everything, taking away every little brush stroke that we had left on there. These synthetic hog hair bristles, guys, I hope you're excited for them. Because I'm so excited to get them into your hands, I'm telling you. Just how softly, and just, I mean, we barely even touched any paint on there. Look at that. No paint on the bristles. And I made them dark on the end so we'd be able to tell if we got paint on them, right? Now remember, these guys, they're just generation ones. They're going to be a lot thicker than they are right now by the time that we get done. And I might need to test two or three versions of them before we even release them out. But can't wait to get them into your guys' hands, honestly. Now, let's come in here. I'm going to ask you guys, because I can show you either which way, okay? We can either do a little sun, if I can find a brush. Where is my filbert? Aha! There we go. We can either do a little sun right out here in the sky, right, with a little filbert brush, or we can use our finger. What do you want to do? I can show you either which way. Let me know. Which is your favorite? Which is your favorite way to do it? And which way do you want me to show you how? Oh, I love the blue in here with the purples and all the stuff. Right? You want to see how to do it with the brush? You want to see how to do it with your finger? Let's see. We got brush, brush, brush. Etsy, Etsy says it's sold. Well, shoot. I've got all three things rocking and rolling. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it is or not. But just in case, guys. Hey! <laughs> Just in case, because I got all three cameras going, so I don't know. All right, we got a lot of brush. We got a couple fingers. We got a lot of brushes, though. You want to see how to do it with the brush, right? All right, so I'm going to show you both, because I can actually show you both ways. We'll do it with the finger first. It's going to get a little bit of paint onto my finger, and out here in the sky, right in our center area, we're going to touch it and just make a little circle. It's very small. Little boop of a sun way out there, right? Far away. It doesn't have to be humongous. I didn't even use all the paint that was on my finger at the time. Right? Or we can take a little bit of paint onto our brush. Just a little bit. You need a little bit more than that. There we go. A little bit of paint onto the brush. Come up here, push flat against it, and then rotate to the left. Makes our sun a lot bigger because our brush is a lot bigger than our fingertip. But make a perfect little circle. If you can't get your, your circle down with your fingertip, go in there with a the brush. Pow! And this awesome little sun just explode right into being just boom just like it happens in the solar system guys all right now let's get out here let's grab a little fan brush and because i'm about to smush and mash it all over the thing let's get one of these gap, uh, gap doctor fan brushes now let's decide maybe we could have some far off little floater clouds that started up here maybe they got a bit bigger as they were going out to the side we can do all sorts of things you guys Literally anything that we wanted to do. But let's come in first. Just a little bit of paint on the brush. Let's come out here. Bang. Little small little guys. Out there, right underneath the sun. Popping them in, mushing them. You see how I'm holding the brush and turning it and mushing it and rotating it each time that we smush it and spin it? That's on purpose, guys. I'm not out here holding it like this, like a pencil or trying to, right? It's not. Have you ever seen me hold a brush like that? No. I don't hold the brush like that. I hold it like a friggin' caveman. And that's how I want you to hold it as well. Let's get in here with the paint with Josh. Two inch brush with the dark tips. Right? Just the tip is dark. 
back in here very lightly. We can mix it and not nick our sun. The more that we mix it up, the more soft it gets, the more it starts turning into all these different colors out here into our sky. All right, boom, 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 boom. Very soft, not even using the whole brush. You can see only really the top couple bristles are activating, right? It's not the whole thing going like this with all the bristles at once. That'd be too much. Kind of turning it away and just grabbing that, just the top, letting it rock and roll, getting softer and softer and softer. How do you want it to look? These oil paints you can smush and mush and blend around and do so many things, guys. And then if you didn't like it, you could go back and blend it all the way out. I'm telling you, you can do it. You specifically watching this right now. You can do it. Let's pop in another guy over here. A little bit bigger, a little bit more paint, but again, mushing it, popping it, coming up, bang, right? Not trying to have them connect, trying to leave a little space in between, because that's how you gotta do it. And we can again come in here with the two inch brush, if it's the paint with Josh two inch, because you're not gonna use too many bristles, right? We're gonna just use the tip tops of the bristles as we wiggle that paint away and back. Now that we're back here, right, we wanna push a little harder. The more that we push, the more bristles we're gonna contact onto the canvas, the more it's gonna spread that white paint around because we're back away from our edge. So that sort of filled it back. Fill it, fill it, fill it. How far do you wanna fill it? Fill the snail, you could do it. Right there, guys. Seriously, okay? Now, let's come in here and let's pop a little bit. Let's get a little of our crimson -y color. Maybe just a touch of that purple too. Just a little touch of it though. Little touch, right? Back in between these guys. Let's throw in just the softest little bit of that purplish color. Little soft little area back there. Let's switch to the paint with Josh one inch because it's even smaller, very thin. We can get in between these two clouds and mix up that little bit of purpley bit back there. Very cool, right? The more purpley darkness that you add to it, the deeper and darker your shadows will be. Right? It doesn't have to even look like a cloud when you first put it up there, because all this is is the back shadowing, right? Let's put some in here, mush it up a little bit, push it up underneath, get it under here, up into the white, bring the white back down over the purple. Do all these little things as you go back and forth. You can do it, guys. Seriously, it's not just me. I'm not the only artist in the world that can do these clouds or that can do these paintings. I'm putting this stuff out for free, showing you how to do it. You can do it. We came up and around here. It was just like right up and around where the two colors blend together, guys. Boom, boom, boom. And this whole little action piece of cloud happening out here. Okay, come up, grab it, pull it backwards into that deeper, darker color, keeping it down and down and down and down and down. Softly, softly, softly. How far do you want to pull it? How lightly do you want to make that cloud disappear? Right, All up to us, what we get to do with our clouds, guys. Let's come back a little bit of that crimson a little bit of that purplish color. Just work a touch of it back in here behind our clouds just so it's messy. You want it to be a weird bit. doesn't have to be perfect. Right? It just needs to be a shadow of something. We can come back in with some more white. And let's say we brightened up certain areas of this cloud. Right? Had a whole bit of brightness out here. Just a chunk. Come back in, mix it down, pull it back, pull it down, pull it over here, pull it over there. Push it wherever you want it to be. Right? It's all up to us. We get to decide, guys, what it looks like. No one else can come in and tell us, hey, it should have looked like this, or it shouldn't look like that, or whatever. Seriously. Who's out there telling us what we can do with our clouds? Not me. I'm telling you, you can do whatever you want and have them look gorgeous. Just gorgeous, you guys. Fantastic. Woo! Look at that color. Right up next to the sun, even kissing it. Bang, little touch. Push it behind the sunlight. Very neat. Come in here with a little crimsony, purpley bit. Let's get a little softness under there. Bang, a little color, a little shadow. In with that paint with Josh, one inch brush. Oof, don't try to overwork it though, right? Little things out there, that's all we need. Little shadowy bits. I love these colors up here, guys, seriously. All right, now, let's go wash off that one, uh, the fan brush and uh, 
I don't think we should need to wash off the one inch brush. We really haven't used it that much. Right? I don't wash the brushes off after every single color. Some of the times it helps to have a bit of that old color on your brush when you're attacking a new color. Right? Some of the times it hurts, but that all depends. Now, let's come in here and lay down our under colors for what we want our ocean to look like. And then we can come and attack the water. Right? Let's grab a little of our crimsony bit. It's going to make this most gorgeous color of our water, especially when we light it up with our, our um, white and really show through all those little bits, right? A little crimson out there. The medium crimson is so wet that you don't need much of it, right? I'm telling you, you don't need to have much. It'll really go a long way as far as staying wet and stretching. Long way. Guys, don't do too much, I'm telling you. Right? After we lay down these colors, we can go back in and add in our dark little faraway hills. Whatever we want to do, we can do. We get to choose, right? Now, since we went with the crimson, maybe we switch it up a bit and go with one of these little colors, maybe like our phthalo blue, sort of right underneath this guy, right, right underneath here, even a little dark area in between. That way we'll have these little things as they're rolling in with these different colors. We'll have little shadows back underneath them, right? Now, let's go into our, maybe our cerulean blue should be very bright. So I'm just very putting on just a small amount. And then maybe we can stretch it out, blend it in with that phthalo blue. We'll have that little different color. Maybe a bit of our phthalo green in there, too. Just a touch of that sea green. Oh, yes. We'll have our little foamy action bits. Now, around all these guys... I want to add a bit of our dark brown for all of our sand. It's going to go around the whole thing. It's going to be like a fisheye lens type of thing. Very much like our uh, mural that we just did. So a bit of our dark sand, and we don't need a whole lot of it. All right, we're going to come from way back there and start to figure out where we want to have our sand versus where we want to have our water. And then brighten it up with a bit of bit. Ooh, there we go. A little bit of that brown, drag this guy back over here. We're going to have our whole bunch of mountains coming down anyway, right? All sorts of stuff that we get to go back and put in and fix. And then, let's say, let's just say we had our sand down over here. A bit of our darker Van Dyke brown as well, in with our dark sienna. We can take our water back, put it back wherever we want it to be. A little bit of brown down here in our sand. Now, when we go back and we light those guys up with our, our um, like, uh, yellow ochre, it's going to be really fantastic. It's going to be really fantastic. Okay, now let's wash off this brush because it's real filthy with all those colors on there. I mean, literally almost every color on that one brush. Let's get all that stuff washed off. How to beat the devil out of it. That's what's the most fun part about doing the whole thing. The whole process, guys. All right, you guys got to let me know where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And are you ready for an awesome seascape to just drop right out of this brush? Are you ready? Are you just so ready? Because here it comes. First thing, let's get some mountainous bits out there, right? Let's need to take that same fan brush we just washed off. Get a little of our brown onto our, on our brush here, right? In these, and especially in the mural that I was doing, I didn't use my palette knife nearly at all because the wall is already so textured, right? It was hard to get the palette knife to slip in between all those little textury bits. And so what I did was I did the, the mountains with my brush. And just the brush, honestly. Taking the colors and blending them together, using a little bit of darkness and a little bit of light, right? Just like we do with our shadows, but doing them on the mountain itself and it really worked out in my favor uh, when it came time to finish the sucker it wasn't so much paint right so let's get over here with our we just put down our two brown colors now with some yellow ochre wipe the brush off so you don't have so much paint on there all right with some yellow ochre let's get out here and just drop on a bit of light over the tip top of that guy and not make it perfect right it doesn't have to be the most perfectest of things Maybe it comes down over here, over there. Maybe this guy had a little bit. Bang, wiggle itself down just so we have these little things. A little bit of brightness. It's very far away detail that we don't really need to focus on too much until we start coming in towards our sand, where our sand is going to be, right? It's far away little mountainous things you can do with a fan brush. 
in just two different colors. A little bit of our dark color to start, and then a little bit of our light right over the tip top. Really get that darkness in there in the back. You get those little shadows back in there, right? Very cool little thing. Now, all it is is yellow ochre and then the two brown colors. Honestly, just don't make it all look the same. And you get these faraway little things that you can that you can do with a fan brush, guys. You don't need a palette knife because I know a lot of people struggle with the knife. They don't like using it. I feel you. I feel you. I didn't like using it to begin with either. But you got to force yourself eventually to start using it. But in the meantime, let's get out here. Maybe we had another little far off little thing. Way out there. Dragging in a little more color. We'll drag it up. Pull it off towards the back. And now we're going to take our one inch brush and soften it down just a little bit. Right? Just a little softer. And that way we can pull away some of its color. Letting it get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Blending in with that liquid white that's on the canvas. All of our clouds. Right? It starts to get lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes off into the distance. And we can come in with the same exact two brown colors. Our dark and our light. Come in with another little mountainous section in here, right into that lighter area, down onto the horizon, right? It's going to help push that further mountain a little bit further away, just because it's a lighter color. Right? Take these guys over here, start to do the same thing. Slide them back. Take them back towards the mountain. It's way back in here, right? Way back in. Lightens it up. We come in with our next little bit of darkness. Now we're starting to connect to our our bits of black gesso mountains over here, so we'll be able to save a lot more shadowy areas a lot easier, right? But just with those little bits of change, right? pull this guy down the other way, straighten him down. All we're doing is sort of softening the paint, bringing it back over here, getting these whole little mountainous things to creep in, right? Now that we've got a few of those got started, let's come in with a fan brush, and we'll start rocking in some of our oceany water. Right. We're going to want to do this at like a U-shaped angle because we want it to look very 3D-ish, almost like a fisheye lens, okay? So let's come back here. We'll grab a bit of our white onto our brush, a little bit of our cad yellow, that real bright yellow color, and come off into our little horizon, which we don't really, I mean, really need that guy. I come back in here and just start to light up a few little bits of water. A couple little things. Drop down a little bit so we're not going to touch the same thing. We can start lighting up a few more little pieces. A few more little bits. Maybe it comes all the way out here. Right, get a little lip. Get a little lip. Get a little lip. So bringing in that water over here. Dragging it back very softly to our next little piece of brightness. Just like we always do, guys. All right, come back in here. We're going to start to soften these guys down. Soften it, soften it, soften it, soften it, soften it. Now try to make everything all the same. All right, drag those guys out to the side, out to the side. Look at all those colors that are in there. And then it's about to turn to this most gorgeous green you've ever seen. All right, pull this guy, we can take him, we can slide him back, slide him back, slide him back towards our next little bit of darkness, guys. All we're trying to do, light up little things, right? Little bits of water as they're rolling in. These soft little waves, and you can see them. They're getting closer and closer and closer and closer each time we do something. Okay, now we're going to wipe off our brush and come back in, get a little bit more of the white, a little bit more of that cad yellow, just so we can use the same color. Right? Let's come out here, lay down a little line. It's a little like this. Who knows? Comes up a little bit. Maybe it's over there. We'll start coming off of this guy. Bang! All of a sudden, we're connected again. Okay, out here, very softly, I'm gonna start sliding back, almost to the, our little shadowy area back here, right? Now our wave angles are gonna have to start changing. They're gonna have to start going more and more and more vertical, especially as we come just like a clock, right? We have our hands going out like this, then they're eventually they're gonna be vertical, and then they're gonna go off this other way. Same thing over here. We can start sliding it back in towards our little guy. Right, slide it, slide it, slide it, slide it, slide it. And now we're going to have to start really working on our angles and starting to change it and pick where we're going to have our center piece, I guess, because that guy is going to go basically straight up, right? So everything around him is going to get more and more and more and more and more vertical as it gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Just like this guy. Right? And that should, yes, that should look like the water is now spreading out. 
out along the beach in the sand, you guys. Oh, the sand, Murray, always with the sand. Bam, bam, bam. Then we'll come back and light it up, soften these little bits down, all right? Let me take them and pull them up like this, literally. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love it. I had this vision as I was painting my mural. I was going to stop doing my big wave and just do one like this. And I was like, nah, I can't do that to myself. I need that big old wave. Right? We'll come in here like this guy. Same sort of thing. Down here, maybe we get a little bit less. Just like so. You know what? We need to come out a bit more anyway. We could lose some of that sand. We could lose some sand. Bring him out here. Start dragging him back, same way, right? Back towards our little next little light area. And the more and more and more we go, the more it's gonna start looking neat, guys. Right in here. This thing, we might end up just taking and pulling straight down. Slide it back over there. Not gonna try to make everything connect as we come up and around the edge. Woo! Look at that water just coming in, baby. It's coming in. Very cool. Very, very cool. The more that you go across these guys and soften them down, the more we take away those little streaks, right? But we don't need to take away every single thing as it's coming in towards us. Now, let's get out here and do some more of our little mountainous bits. We need a bit more of that dark water, or a dark uh, brown color. Let's go with just the Van Dyke brown, the deeper, darker version. Let's come along the tip tops of our little edges, right? Come down here. It's going to get hit into the water, take a little of our brown color, move it back. And eventually it's going to come up and around the tip top. We might hang off a few little bits of things. But watch this. Even with the same brush, okay, if I'm not going to cover every bit, we're going to start scraping back and forth. Right? Maybe we jump down, maybe we come back up here, and then we look at it. We go, ooh, that looks kind of funky. Maybe what if we connected it just a little, right? Now it's got a little hole in the rock. If we start turning up, we'll start going up this way. Little things, take this guy, drag off some color just to sh kind of shrink that line down a little bit. It right? doesn't all have to be the most perfectest thing. We don't want them all to be the same color, so just drag it across until you like it. Right? You see a little dip in there. Come over here, start flattening these guys off. You got a whole other thing out here, over there. Right? We get to decide. You don't have to use your palette knife all the time. Change the angle. Start coming down a little more steep, leaving little places in between, and you can start to build your little rocks, guys. I'm telling you, if I ain't done told you once, I done told you a million times, you can do it too. I'm so serious. I am so uberly serious, guys. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. There's nothing special about me. I mean, I am related to Bob Ross. I just found out like a week ago. My, uh, my grandma's been doing some some uh, family tree-ing because, you know, grandma's kind of bored. That's what grandmas do. They do family tree stuff. So she's been doing the family tree, and uh, my grandfather's eighth cousin was William Robert Ross, and uh, it literally blew my mind. I haven't even announced it, like, in a post or anything. I've told a couple people that, uh, that I love and hate because I want them to know. You know what I mean? Man, look at that. Water, guys, seeking out, getting all crazy. Now let's come in here. But yeah, I forgot where I was going. But in any case, um, yeah, Bob Ross is in my blood. No wonder why I've got all this natural talent, I guess. All right, let's get out here with a little of our white. I'm going to come up just with our knife and just sort of outline a few little bits of water out there. All right? We don't want it to get too crazy bright. They don't have to be perfect bits of water. Right? It's a bit of foaminess. It's rolling in on our next wave. Doesn't need to be perfect every single time. And that's with a little of our titanium white and a little of our liquid white. Right? Just out there. Little things happening. A couple things far off in the distance. Not every piece has to look the same. It doesn't all have to connect. Nothing like that. Right? Come in here. Scrape it up into that bit. Scrape it down over there. Come over to this guy, scrape in a little on him, drop in a bit like that, right? If you don't have enough on your brush, it's not going to come off as much. Right? So you start scraping it, start dropping in all this little watery stuff, trying to not go over our dark separator that's right there. 
Drag that guy back a little bit. Off from this edge, we need to drop a little over here, over there. Get some more onto our knife. There we go. Bang, drag it. Pull some of that stuff back. Work it in. Not everything has to be all the same. Right? Get all these little things that are going on. Stuff's about to come crash onto the shore. Maybe it's hitting the shore and crashing. Maybe there's a bit of water coming off the edge. Who knows? But it doesn't all have to be perfect, man. It's the water. A little softness of our brush. Paint with Josh one inch brush is so soft, literally. Literally the softest thing you've ever felt. Oh, I just love it. All right, I'm gonna come out here. A little bit more of that liquid white. A little bit of our titanium white. Let's come down, Let's scrape it in. Come back up, grab some more, scrape it down. All we need to do, have a little bit of that guy, right? And come out a little differently in some places. Over here, scrape this stuff. A little action, right? That's my favorite part about doing the ocean, is it doesn't have to be perfect. There's all this stuff going on out there, and there's so many places to look that you don't have to do it perfectly every time. No one is even going to see that part that you think you don't like, right? A little scrapey bits, start working it back into our bit of water as it's seeping its way into the land. Little things, guys, little bits. Don't have to worry about it too much. The more you worry about it, the more you're gonna dislike it, trust me. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Just get it in there, drop it on, and then move on to the next one, right? Now, what I wanna do is that same liquid white. I wanna come in underneath this guy, right? And this time I'm gonna put a little extra because I wanna light up that whole area, okay? Whole side is gonna be a bit brighter to have a little sheen of our water on there. Just a little sheen of the water. Okay, so we're gonna come in, pull it down, just a little touch. Don't want it to go too far out of my, my. I mean, I guess we could, out of our little oceany bit. This whole thing could be oceany, shiny sand. Oh yes, <laughs> it is now. Just by pulling it down, right? To get that last little bit of our liquid white. Dragging it down, dragging it down, dragging it down, making our sand look a little bit more wetter. All right? Softly dragging it to the side on both sides, going back from the other edge, dragging it back to our water. Just like that, right? Get these little things that are happening out there, guys. Little things tend to live out there in the ocean, if you can imagine. <laughs> Let's get our knife, wiggle on a couple more little crazy bits of water as they're coming in, all right? All these little bits, little things, just by smooshing on some color and wiggling it around is all we're doing. Grabbing up onto it, trying to leave some differences where you have some light areas, some dark areas. Look at those little bits that are out there floating in the night or day or whatever time it is. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a certain time. Either way, we're not going to see them too far away on either side. Right, right here in the front is where our, most of our action is going to be have all that stuff in here. Boom, 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 boom. All that bit, just looking fantastic. Okay, grab up another little fan brush because I need a clean one. Just a clean little guy. We'll get a bit of our liquid white and a bit of our titanium white. Just to make it a little more slickish. Come in here and start laying down one more little line water back over here and it came all the way out on that side as well you never know you never ever know and start sliding them back slide them back slide them back slide them back slide them back not trying to cover up all that stuff right i want to see a lot of that color and little differences so not everything all has to be the same a little bit out here on his edge and then we're going to come back and do another little line right underneath him with our liquid light, just a little touch. Out there, out there, over here. Where are we gonna put it? Wherever we're gonna put it, it's gonna brighten up our sand in all sorts of ways, right? We're gonna get a little of our yellow ochre and our Indian yellow. A little of our cad yellow, drop that guy on there. Dumping them out here, out there, and everywhere. Just at random, because when we come back in with our two inch brush, 
and you push down on those guys, right? You're gonna get that really shiny, sandy, watery feel to our, our sand. Look at this thing go. Look at it go. All those different colors are mixing in with the with the browns that are underneath. All those things. The more that we go around the edge, the further that we pull down, the more it's gonna light up our little beach. We come from the side, really back and forth, really make it nice and soft. Take away those little horizontal streaks and turn them into, uh, sorry, vertical streaks and turn them into horizontal streaks. And all of a sudden you got a really cool thing happening down here, right? Now let's go in a little of our black because we need to make this rock a little darker, stand out a little bit more, right? And we had a whole other thing coming down in here, right into the sand, popping up all crazily, bang, over there, over here. And again, you can start to highlight this guy just with the fan brush. Just by going over it a few times, dragging it away, right? We want the back to be dark. So we're gonna fill it all in, all with that brown color. Hey, we've already sealed in our little thing down here. And I can tell it's not as dark as I want it to be. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black, just straight up black down at the bottom. Fill it out, because we ended up covering up too much, which we usually do, it's fine. There, it's a little bit darker now. Right, now we're gonna get that other fan brush that's got our light color on it. And then, really, Light this guy up a little of our yellow ochre right on the edge of him and start to light up these cool little things. And the more that we wiggle it in, right, it's going to blend and blend and blend. Staying kind of bright. And we turn the angle and we come down this way. And that guy connects over here. So we're taking it, pushing it, mushing it. Little bright areas, little dark areas. Maybe it came up over here and it came back down. And it was a little bit of brightness all sliding down this way. You never know, guys, until you go and do it. So, get in there, even with your fan brush, you can make it happen, I'm telling you. If you get a little bit too much brightness, go back with a little bit of dark. Put that dark in there. Right? Work the dark back up from the back. Boom, 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 boom. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be the same. Doesn't have to be anything, really. We get to decide. We can change up the whole thing and come down at this angle like this, right? Dragging it down, coming over here, dragging it over to the side, up a little bit, maybe up a little more, maybe we connect, we come over here, and maybe this guy comes up and connects with that guy. Over there, boom, 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 boom. Got your own little rock all up to what we want it to look like, guys. Seriously. And then, how do you pull it down? How do you shape it? How do you soften it? All up to us. We get to decide. Very cool. I like this one already. Forgot to go soften these dudes way back here. But it's okay. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Guys, that simple, seriously, it's really that easy. And you can do it yourself, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you can. This, this gives me like, like Land Before Time vibes. I don't know why, but it does. Lots of Land Before Time vibes here. Don't ask. I'm just telling you. Whole little, little gougy little thing happening in here too, just to darken it up a bit. Really make it darker down around the base. And then we can go back over it and highlight it with some different little shadows and such, just with the same color. Going back over it with that uh, yellow ochre, right? not trying to brighten everything all the same amount. Add it back in different places, little things, all we gotta do. Right? A little bit more of our yellow ochre, maybe we come down over here. Whole another little section, just blasting it in with our brush, going back, making it softer with our bigger brush, and all of a sudden you can see those slight little changes down into that deeper, darker spot. Very, very cool, guys. Very cool. Now, who bought this painting is my question. Who purchased this one, guys? Has anyone come forth and said? It's very fisheye lensy. Very, very fisheye lensy. <laughs> Oh, did Ashley buy this painting, you guys? Did she get this one? I've been meaning to make Ashley a, uh, a mod for a while. There we go. Did you buy this one, Ashley? You nutcase. <laughs> I very much appreciate you. Whoop, holy moly. I'm dropping this over here. Now, we got about 15 minutes left, and I figure maybe we could get a little palm tree or two or 20, maybe. Perhaps. <laughs> you can drop one right out here. And this guy came down. 
a little fatter. It was right there down on the shore, right? Very much like, I don't, I, I can't, I don't know why it gives me Land Before Times vibes, but I just, I feel Land Before Time right here. I don't know why. Don't ask. Don't ask, but it does. Off to the side, dragging off our little things, getting shorter and shorter and shorter, right? They don't have to be humongous fronds on your palm trees. They really don't. You don't want to do too many of them. You do too many of them, it starts to look very strange. Don't try to do one that above either. That looks weirder. All right, just gotta drop down. Far off little palm tree action. Make this guy, make him a little darker, a little thicker on his trunk. And we'll stand out a bit, and we could even get a little of that yellow ochre same way and do the light side of this little tree trunk right out there. Just living in the sand, Murray, in the sand, always with the sand. Way out there, darkness underneath him. Little palm tree action, loving it. Just loving it. What if we had a much, much, much smaller little guy? Right, these guys are way the heck out here. Just so small on the edge of nothing. On the edge of nothingness, way out there. And then we're gonna come off with a little touch. A little thing going one way, going the other way. And we'll drag over here, over there. And it's very, very, very far off. And it's almost so small you can barely even see it. I mean, I can sort of tell what it is, but it's so small you can almost not even see it. Let me just turn that guy into a little, little piece of extended rock out here. And that's what we'll do. A little piece of extended rock happening way out on the edge. Now, before we get too far along, let's not forget about our little oceany you know, crashing waves against the side way back here, right? We don't need them to be humongous, so if you get one that's too big, you can always go over it a few times, cut it back, make it a little smaller. Maybe this guy started coming in on the edge. I don't need it to be so bright. Let's go back in there. Cut it up, make it look however you want it to look. That's the best part about painting, right? The best part about it is we get to decide what we want it to look like, where we want stuff to be. I'm down there. Very cool. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, we get to decide, guys. Nobody else has to tell us what it should look like, what it doesn't look like, what it does look like, whatever. But I'm definitely thinking Land Before Time on this guy. What do you guys think? You gotta let me know. Or at least let Ashley know. If she's the one that bought it, she's the one that gets to choose all of the cool titles that come forth. She's gonna be the one and it gets to pick. So, hit Ashley with your titles, guys. What do you want to name this guy? Because we're running a little low on time. We've got 12 minutes left. Got to get her spinny winny wheel going. In the old action. Up a little bits here, a little bit there. Scrape it in. Turn the knife over. Run it through. All right? You're not going to hurt the canvas by scraping at it. Give it a couple little weird little things. Come over here. A little scrape. If you dump off too much, make it a little bit larger. Go back over it. Take it back that way. Turn your knife over. Push it back the other way. We want it to be a big mess down here in the water. It's not supposed to be the most beautifulest thing you've ever seen. It's supposed to be a bunch of randomness being pulled in different directions, moving all over the place. And how are we going to do that if we're trying to make it perfect? Right? We need it to be weird. We want it to be strange and messy. Because that's what the water is. Boom, boom, boom. Except right along the edge. That's where we want to keep it nice and clean. Right along the edge. Not cover over our dark separator, because that guy is going to be tough to put back in if we do. Right? Don't do that. Right there. Over here. Little things. A little bit of paint. Just kind of mushing it and pushing it flat and dragging it off. Changing our pressure, turning it, rotating it, cutting it in. Little things, little ridges of lines and different things. You can go back in and mush those guys however you see fit. Very cool. This fisheye lens is a difficult, difficult thing to 
achieve, but I think we did a fairly decent job of doing it. If you just ask me. I mean, I might be a little bit biased, but if you ask me, I'm thinking it ain't that bad. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Softly along the edges. I'm going to leave the one right in the middle very wet, right? That's going to trick our eyes into thinking this is closer and that's further away. It's very cool, though. I, I, I freaking dig it. <laughs> I really like it. So, what if we got a little of our dark mix? Just a little bit, because we got like 10 minutes. So let's get a little of our dark mix. Let's mix up these three dark colors. Guys, what are the three dark colors that we always mix up in order to create the Paint with Josh plaque mix? That deep, dark mix of color that everybody knows is your most favoritist thing in the world. <laughs> what are those three colors? As we come in with that big old round brush, and let's come off the tip top of this guy. Like we're just dangling down a few little things, right? A couple little bits that are dangling from the edge. Maybe we'll come over here. Because we don't have so much texture on our rocky bits, right? I'm going to put this thing down before it shakes my whole canvas out the palette. Put in a few little areas that are real bright and uh, have a bunch of real gorgeous little textury pieces to it. That's my thought anyway. Right? We, didn't do, we didn't go texture on the rocks, so we could go texture on the bushies in between all the rocks, right? Be very cool. Oh yeah. I mean, we can have it dangle over. I don't want to do too much and get rid of too many of my little details that I've got on there already. Very neat. A couple little bits, little things here, little things there, that's all. Just a thing or two here and there is all. Nothing to worry about. Over here, bringing down our sky. There we go. There we go. Excellent. All right, now, a couple bits of color, guys, and we'll be all set to go. So, you guys got to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And you got to come up with a name for Ashley for this painting. If she did indeed purchase, she's going to need a name for this painting. And she's going to need help from you guys, obviously. Now I'm going to get a bit of my green, a bit of my phthalo green, a bit of my sap green, a bit of both. I'm going to come up here and drop on a couple little pieces down around the back. So you've got that kind of green base way back there. And that'll help whatever colors that we add on into here really blend down, right? So let's wash off that green one more time. And then we'll come in, what keeps falling over on my table? And then we'll come in with our colors, and it'll just be gorgeous. Alright guys, a couple little bits, what if we popped in, dude, what if this, what if, just to see what this cerulean blue would even look, oh my god, it's so gorgeous! Oh, that's what it looks like. It looks so gorgeous. Yeah, no, I remember now. What is it? How does it look? So gorgeous? Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's come over here, see if we can get... You know what, I gotta wipe it off. I gotta get rid of that. That's a beautiful blue color, though. I might use that more for flowers in the future. A little Indian yellow, a little cad yellow. Let's pop around just a few little things along the outside. Maybe down around where the light would be hitting underneath. Catching a few of those little guys. Very cool. Nothing crazy. You don't have too many of them, right? Now, leading into all that light, we can pop in a bit of this yellow and our, our Indian yellow. Maybe go up into our crimsony color just to have some deeper, darker, purpley bits in there hanging off the side. You could literally go back to your green. You could do the Indian. You could do the yellow ochre. You could do whatever you want. Let those suckers dangle down a little bit. Just really, really trying to get down to that next bush. Right, off of this guy, same little thing. Real bright, real gorgeous little colors. Popping them in here, there, and everywhere. Super texture down here, too. My goodness. My goodness. Don't want it to be so dark, but we do want it to be dark down around the bottom. Now, guys, Ashley, what do you think of this one? Ashley, guys, girls, gals, my gal pals, my painting pals, and everybody in between. What do you guys think of this one? What do you think of this one?
Anybody? Sun-Kissed Dreams. Ashley chose Sun-Kissed Dreams by Airy Fairy Faye. I love this. Get rid of these little bits right here. I love adding some finger painting to the painting by the time we get done. That's very cool. Very, very eye-catchingly pretty out there in the night or day or whatever time it was. Way out in the day. So, what's the title again? Pin it up there because I already forgot. Already forgot. These little mountainous rocks coming into more detail and then all these flowery bits. Just fantastic. See, we've got a palm tree off in the distance, guys. Palm tree with a little bushy bit sit at the base of it, right? So it doesn't need to be perfectly perfect and maybe just a couple little flowery bits on him. We don't need to see every piece of him way off in the distance, but very cool, guys. Very cool. Just like so. Very neat. All right. Sun-kissed soda. Is that what we're calling it? I do love some sun-kissed, honestly. I've got some, uh, I've got some, like, well, it's not sun-kissed, but I've got Fanta orange, like the Mexican Fanta, though, with the real sugar. Got that down in the fridge. Got some cactus cooler down in the fridge. Cactus cooler! If you don't know, now you know. Cactus cooler is the biz, bro. The biz. The shiz. Alright, let's go over here. That. Wipe off this old guy. Alright, what was the title? One more time. Sun Kissed Dreams. Sun Kissed Dreamers. I like it. This guy's big, dude. I forget how big 30 inches is, ladies. <laughs> or three. Or two. Whatever. In any case, 30 inch canvas is a monster. Over there. I almost forget how to spell original every time. This canvas is number one, two, three, four, which I thought was pretty cool. And we're calling it Sun Kissed Dreams. Right? Or is it beach? Is it Sunkiss Beach? Yeah, Sunkiss Beach. Got it. Painted on 329 of 2024. And we're all gonna go check out paintwithjosh.com. But not only that, I'm gonna go over to Glitterwix right now and join her stream, and then we're all gonna bomb her with like paint palette comments, right? So whatever platform you're watching on, she's gonna be live right after moi, and we're gonna go just pummel her with uh, paint palette emojis. They call it spamming. We're gonna go spam her with all these emoji palettes, right? And a little of our liquid white on the tip top where we can't reach makes it slide so much easier. Oh, oh boy, there we go. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Okay, over there. Now, let's get the spinny-winny wheel out for Ashley because when you buy during a live show, you get a chance at a free gift. So, let me spin this guy back. Put that over there. Grab the old wheel. And we're going to give Ashley a spin on a spin -a, -roo. a little spin -a -roo, they say. Right after I blow my nose. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we give Ashley a little spin -a on the spinny winny wheel. <laughs> okay, guys. Ashley, are we keeping the wheel? Give Aerie my spin, she said. Aerie's getting the free spinner winner wheel. Or spinny winny, as we call it. Here we go. Let's do it. Try to get a drum roll going. Hey, you get the Paint With Josh snapback logo hat. And I know that she's going to love that because all of her nephews want to steal all of her Paint With Josh logo hats and she needs one for herself. I know that. So, uh, excellent. Let's write it down, put it in the room, put it on the list. And then, Harry got the hat. Bang, right there. Mm.
<laughs> that was a good drink. All right. Well, I'm going to say goodbye to Facebook and uh, to YouTube. I love you guys. Thank you both for tuning in. And I say you both like there's only one each watching. Thank you both for being here and tuning in, learning how to paint this awesome seascape. I can't wait to see your version of it. And uh, please send it in to my Facebook page because I love seeing when you guys do versions of my painting. So send them in, facebook.com slash official paint with Josh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care, have the rest of a good day, and bah, bah, just crazy. All right, TikTokers.